God. As I was preparing this message, like the pastor said, I was consulting different commentaries and reading different stuff on the web. And when you read about the first book of Samuel, they always mention four main people in the book. It's Samuel, Eli, Saul, and David. And they, naturally, of course, they definitely are main people in the book, but I don't think it's by chance that the book opens up with the story of Hannah All right. and her prayer and the fact that she wasn't able to conceive a child. All right. When you think about the Bible, there, there are a handful of stories about, there's a handful of birth stories that start, start off with the main character, the main person's birth. And it's because if you look at these birth stories, they really are significant. It's not just about these people being born. There's some significance and a lesson to be learned in this birth process. Amen. For example, Moses. We all know his story. His mother sailed him down the river Nile to keep him alive. He went on and led the Israel people out of slavery. There's Isaac, of course, whose story is very similar to Samuel's, where his mother was unable to have children, wow. and she prayed, and they were able to have this child. Of course, there's Samuel. There's also John the Baptist. Again, wow. elderly parents able to conceive this son, who was meant to be born to, to prepare the path and prepare the way for Jesus. And of course, there's the birth of Jesus Christ, and we know how awesome that story is. So I, the Lord urged me to dig deeper into this story. So let's go back and really just look at this story. Elkanah was an Israelite who lived in the hill country of Ephraim, and this is the area of Jerusalem. He had two wives. Ladies, just sit with that for a minute. <laughs> Hannah is to believe to be his first wife, and he loved her very much but she was unable to conceive a child. So, of course, he took the second wife in, and her name was Peninnah, and she had several children for Elkanah. And in those days, women were very much judged and valued by their ability to have children, especially sons, because sons would be able to carry on the name. So it was actually viewed as a curse from God if you were not able to conceive. So you can only imagine what Hannah had to deal with in the marketplace and at worship service and down at the watering well, people whispering and, you know, probably saying nasty things about, oh, what, what did she do? She must have sinned, and what's her problem? Why can't she have any children? Well, and, you know, her husband had to marry Peninnah, you know, to get his children. So can you imagine, as a woman, having to deal with that? You're already struggling through the fact that you're unable to, con to conceive, and then you have to deal with this. And if, as if that wasn't bad enough, Peninnah was her worst enemy. The Bible tells us that she constantly just jabbed at her. Look at all my children, Hannah. I've had all these children for your husband, and you can't have any. She was like a child. It was like, nay, nanny, boo-boo. You want this, and I've got it. It was awful. Hannah was tormented year after year, and she prayed for God to open her womb. And year after year, Penn and I had baby after baby. Because of the law of Moses, the time came for the family's annual trip to the tabernacle at Shiloh to worship and make sacrifices to the Lord. Elkanah would provide a portion of the sacrifice to both his wives and Peninnah's children, but he, of course, would give Hannah a double portion. Because, like I said, he loved her very much. And, of course, you know Peninnah. That just gave her fuel for the fire. You know, she hated that. So, of course, she would really... Whenever they made this trip, just really get on Hannah and just torment her and ridicule her for her inability to conceive children. So these trips to Shiloh would magnify Hannah's grief, and her heart was heavy to the point where she couldn't eat. Elkanah tried to comfort her, bless his heart, and he really did mean well. He, Hannah, what, what's the problem? Aren't I, you have me. Aren't I better than ten sons? And he just didn't get it. He just didn't get really what she was going through, but he, he did try. So Hannah needed to take her, her concern to the Lord again, which brings me to my first point. We are to pray with persistence. In Matthew 6, 5 and 13, Jesus taught us that prayer is an intimate relationship with the Father that includes a dependency on him for daily needs, commitment to obedience, and forgiveness of sin. It is imperative in order to build and sustain a relationship with our Heavenly Father to go to him in prayer all the time about everything. Yeah. We are to take our issues, our problems, our concerns, our requests, our petitions, our confessions of sin, and our thank thankgiveness to, to the Lord every day, constantly. Paul tells us in Philippians 4, 6 and 7, do not be anxious about anything. Instead, in every situation, through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, tell your requests to God. 
And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Persistent prayer can move the heart of God to act on your behalf. There are several stories in the Bible that prove that persistence does bear fruit. If you remember in Genesis, Jacob wrestling all night until he just refused to let go until he was blessed. Until you get an answer, you've got to keep taking your petition to God. It, it may take months. It may take years. But you've got to continue to go and stay steadfast. If you need a little bit more motivation, remember the story, the parable that Jesus told us in the book of Luke about the, uh, the widow who went to the judge several times and she was wronged and she wanted justice for what she was wronged for. And the judge, oh, you know, get that woman out of here. He didn't want to have anything to do with it. But that woman kept going back and kept going back because she felt she needed to be vindicated to the point where the judge was like, okay, she, I'm, I'm tired of her. Just go on and give her what she wants. She was the squeaky wheel that got the oil. And, if the, and the judge, was, he was considered to be a wicked man. So if a wicked man can be persuaded by persistence, surely God can. Jesus offered this parable to let us know we need to be persistent in what we ask for. For years, Hannah went to God for a child. Even though he did not grant her request, she kept on praying. In spite of Peninnah's ridicule and persecution, she kept on praying. Regardless of the whispers and the stares and the rumors by the townspeople, she kept on praying. Even when Eli, the high priest of the tabernacle, accused her of being drunk while she was praying, she was unmoved. She did not, that did not bother her one bit. Persistent prayer will get God's attention. Hannah knew what she wanted, and she prayed until she got an answer. Her request was granted, but there are times when God will tell us no. And it's through faith and the relationship with God that we must trust that answer. Is it possible that God has a purpose for our pain? His grace is sufficient. And his power is made perfect in our weakness. Our problems or circumstances may be necessary so that the world can witness God's power and glory. When I was reading this, the first person that came to mind was Sister Pat Palmer. Now, to the outside world, people may think, how, how does she do it? How does she continue to go on? She has various ailments in her body. She's had to go through amputation. But I tell you, if Sister Pat has to crawl in here, she is going to be in church. And not only is she in here in church, she'll offer up a song and a testimony that I know it speaks to my heart, and I know it has spoken to many of yours. So it's a purpose for the things that she has to go through so that we can see that in spite of all that, God is still on the throne, and he is still perfect. So whatever your petition is, if God has yet to give you an answer or he has told you to wait, keep on praying, keep on asking, keep on knocking. My second point, pray boldly. Mm. Hannah wanted a son. Mm. Mm. What do you want? Well. What are you asking the Lord for? Well. She was persistent in prayer. Have you been? Well. I know I fall short. I gave a meditation some time ago that was called Operation Push. Push, pray until something happens. And, you know, there's issues and things that I've been dealing with for a couple of years, and there's a time I'm gung-ho and I'm praying, and then I get discouraged. You know, the enemy lets me know, tells me different things, and I fall for it. The Lord isn't listening to that prayer. He's never going to answer that. Why do you keep coming to him with that same petition? And I fall for it. 